present Arthur Lowe, John Le Measurer, and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> Episode two, museum piece, featuring John Lorry, James Beck, and Ian Lavender, with this week's guest, Eric Woodburn. <laughs> now, here is the latest news, and this is John Snag reading it. It is May 1940, and through France and Belgium, the Nazi war machine sweeps forward relentlessly. In Britain, the able-bodied men, and some not so able, have answered their country's call to join Britain's citizens' army, the local defence volunteers. The men who make up this new part-time force are out on parade every night of the week, but in spite of this, they carry on their workaday lives as usual. It is Monday morning, and at Swallows Bank in Warmington-on-Sea, the manager, Mr Mannering, and his chief clerk get down to the business of the week. Ah, oh, Wilson, come in. I want to have a word with you about yesterday's manoeuvres. Oh, do you, sir? I think we learnt a lot of valuable lessons. Oh, I'm sure we did, sir. At the same time, I don't think we received the unthinking obedience which we are entitled to expect if we are to become an efficient fighting unit. Well, I wouldn't say that, sir. Well, I would. When I ordered one of the platoon to wade through the river, did I get unthinking obedience? Well, some of them did have a thought or two, sir. Exactly. <laughs> Furthermore, some of them put those thoughts into words. Oh, who did they, sir? Unless I'm very much mistaken, when I gave the command, ford the river, somebody said, get stuffed. Hmm? <laughs> That's probably Fraser, sir, that Bosch is Scotsman. The voice sounded distinctly English, Wilson. Oh, really, sir. And I mean, of course, Fraser's very crafty. Anyway, I'll try and see it doesn't happen again. Hmm. Well, the point is this, Wilson. Whoever said it, nobody crossed the river. Well, some of us were wearing our best suits, sir. You weren't wearing your best suit. Oh, it was my father's, sir. He thought very highly of it. <laughs> Young Pike showed the right spirit. He went in out to his thighs. Lucky for us that he wasn't wearing his father's suit. Well, actually, sir, he was wearing his father's fishing waders. It was just bad luck that he fell flat on his face halfway across. Be that as it may, I would have welcomed an example from you as my second in command. Well, I was first across the bridge, sir. Hardly a brilliant move, Wilson, after I'd already explained that the bridge was demolished. Well, it wasn't, sir, was it? You were supposed to pretend it was demolished. Well, I did, sir. We all did. We all pretended it was demolished, and we just used it to help us to pretend to go splashing through the river without actually getting wet. You know, sometimes, Wilson, your attitude worries me. Yes, well, I'm awfully sorry, sir, but anyway, I'm sure when we get our uniforms, you'll be able to send us charging like madmen through every river in the district with impunity. I'll remember that, Sergeant Wilson. <laughs> Listen, Eddie, is there any news of the uniform, sir? Six weeks at the earliest. Same for the rifles. Six weeks. Until then, we have to fight Hitler's parachutists with one shotgun, 15 carving knives, my cricket bat, and Lance Corporal Jones's assay guy. <laughs> you left out the pepper. And don't forget Godfrey's number three iron. I'm sure he'd do better with the wood. Come in. Here's the post, sir. Ah, thank you, Pike. You seem to have recovered from your ducking yesterday. Oh, yes, sir. As soon as I got in, I wallowed in a hot bath. Wallowed? <laughs> That's not very patriotic, is it? You're only supposed to have six inches of bath water, you know. Yeah, well, sir, I worked it out that you can have seven six-inch baths a week. That means you can have 42 inches of water. But I do better than that. I make do with two 15-inch baths a week and save 12 inches of water. <laughs> save your mathematics for your work, Pike. Yes, sir. That'll be all. Yes, sir. Oh, dear. Wilson. Yes, sir. Here's another request for an account to be closed for oh, the really, duration. really, sir? Which one is that? It's the Peabody Museum of Historical Army Weapons. This is from the curator. Apparently he's joined the Navy. The museum is being closed for the duration and he wants us to transfer all their funds to a deposit account until he returns. You deal with that, will you, Wilson? Yes, certainly, sir. Right away. Oh, uh, just a moment, sir. Yes, what is it? Did you say weapon museum, sir? Yes, that's right. By Jove, Wilson. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I doubt it, sir. <laughs> you never know. There might be something there we can use. Well, I don't think we should get too excited, sir. Their prize exhibit is a full-scale replica of Burdessier's chariot. <laughs> they go for the Crimean, don't they? And the Boer War. Well, surely that sort of thing won't be of any use to us, sir. Nonsense! British Army hasn't changed its rifle since they threw out the flintlock. <laughs> what do you think they used to relieve Ladysmith? Well, I've never really given it much thought. <laughs> Carbines, Wilson. 303 carbines, or Amadut. Well, I'll draft a letter to GHQ suggesting they look into it. Oh, no. Oh, no, Wilson. We're not waiting for reams of bump from them. Before we see another dawn, the sky can be black with parachutists. Those weapons will be in our hands today. Parade the men at the church hall at 1600 hours, ready to move off. Well, the shops don't shut until 5.30, sir. Well, they'll be ready by 6, can't they? Well, that's 1800 hours, sir. What? 
Ah, oh, yes, so it is. Well, parade them at 1800 hours for Operation Gungram. But if we just breeze along and take the guns, won't that be stealing? There's a war on Wilson. I know that, sir. I'm fully aware of that, but it still sounds very much like stealing. I'm an army officer, and I shall requisition anything I require for the defence of our homes and of this town. Here we are, then. Oh, evening, Mr Walker. Hello there, young pikey. Now, listen, lads. There's ten minutes before we start the parade, so I've got a few items in scarce supply, in case somebody's interested. Yeah. I've got chocolate biscuits, air grips, elastic, five bobby yards. <laughs> it's so long since it's been in the shops that the ladies must be getting a bit desperate. <laughs> what about you, Mr Fraser? You want a bit to keep up your kilt? <laughs> I'm no wearing my kilt. No, well, you want to watch it, Jock. It could be a bit drafty around the Cangorns. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Wilson. Oh, what is it, Pi? Did you see Mr. Mannering just now? No, has he arrived? Well, he just crept into the hall, put that brick down there on the floor, and then crept out again. Why do you think he did that, Mr. Wilson? I've really no idea, Pike. Bang! What? 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 Bang! What? What's going on? Fools, you're all dead. What's she blathering about? That brick represents a German grenade. I am a German parachutist and you're all dead. <laughs> Sam Wilson? Yes, sir. Why wasn't the sentry posted? Well, the parade doesn't start for another five minutes, sir. That's right, we weren't ready. If you think the Nazi hordes are going to wait until you're ready, you've got another thing coming. <laughs> you need to be alert at all times. The enemy aren't going to ring up and make an appointment, you know. I'm sorry, sir. Shall I fall the men in? Yes, please. But, uh, would you mind falling in in three ranks, please? Wilson, Wilson. <laughs> Try and make it sound a bit more like an order. I'm oh, sorry, sir. Would you mind falling in in three ranks, please? Oh. <laughs> all right, at ease, everyone. Squad, attention. The men are all present and correct, sir. Stand the men at ease, Sergeant. Right, sir. Squad, stand at ease. Now, men, I won't beat about the bush. As you know, we are desperately short of arms. Desperate times call for desperate measures. So we're going to requisition what arms we need from the Peabody Museum of Army Weapons. Permit to speak, sir? What is it, Jones? They won't let you have nothing, sir. I don't see why not. <laughs> the museum's closed for the duration. There's only some old fool of a caretaker in charge. That's my father. Oh. <laughs> what is it? Your dad? Blimey, he must be getting on. He's not. He's only 88. <laughs> Mind you, he was very young when he had me. He got married again for the third time last year. Between you and me, I think you had to. <laughs> Don't rattle your family skeletons here, Jones. Anyway, I shall make an official requisition. Besides, he's too old to stop us. I wouldn't count on that, sir. He turns very ugly when he's roused. It runs in the family. Yeah. Watch it, watch it. Private walk is no call for that. Insubordination, that is. All right, that'll do. Well, I'll put him on a fizzer, I will. That's what I do. Jones, I don't think there's any need for that. Well, he's had it for awful. <laughs> I was only joking. Silence in the ranks. <laughs> Thank you, Wilson. <laughs> Fall the men in outside, right. and then it's quick march to the Peabody Museum. This is it, Wilson. Yes, sir. How lovely these old Elizabethan places are, aren't they? And look at the line of those windows and the symmetry of that arch over the entrance door. Lots of lovely large rooms and plenty of space to move about in. Huge grounds with the most beautiful moat. Wilson, w Wilson. <laughs> You're my sergeant, not an estate agent. <laughs> that main door doesn't look as if it's been open for months. And Mr. Speaks up. Yes, Jones, what is it? But when someone calls here, my old dad uses that little trap door there to see that they are who they say they is. <laughs> he, he don't open the main door until he has cognizance of your credentials. Thank you, Jones. One can't overestimate the value of good inside information, Wilson. No, sir, no. Even when it does come from outside. Quite. <laughs> right, bang the knocker. All right, sir. I think you'd better let me talk to him. All right, Jones. See what you can do. Sir. There's someone coming, Mr. Manring. Well done, Pike. <laughs> I think you're right. What you want? Hello, Dad. It's me, young Jack. 
Well, it took you long enough to come around, didn't it? Well, no need to be like that. There's a war on. There's a what? There's a war on! Oh, I wondered what the noise was. <laughs> How's Elsie? Well, it's her legs, you see. Wilson, yes, sir? Who's Elsie? I've really no idea, sir. I've heard of Gert and Daisy. <laughs> Don't be facetious. What about her legs? Her legs is troubling her a bit. Ha! They never troubled no one else. Great, fat, bulging things, like a elephant. There's no need for you to get personal about my Elsie. We never done you no harm. You never done me no good, neither. You never deserved no good, you randy old drunk. Ah! <laughs> oh, you're getting ugly. You always did get ugly. It's you what got ugly. Let just, me just, just... Just, just a moment, Corporal Jones. I think I'd better take over here. Now, Mr Jones, I've come to requisition some arms. Who are you? My name is Captain Mannering. I'm the manager of Swallows Bank. Captains don't manage banks. No. Well, I'm here in my capacity as captain of this unit. Captains wear uniform. Where's your uniform? We haven't got uniforms. Yeah, you can see that. Now, anyone in the town will tell you that I'm the manager of Swallows Bank and I've recently taken command... Liar! Of... Liar! I've been going to that bank for years. You never served me. I don't serve people. I'm in my office. Afraid to show your face, eh? <laughs> well, you're not getting nothing from me, so clear off. How dare he slam that shutter in my face? Who do you think I am? A brush salesman? <laughs> Open this door, Mr. Jones! What's the matter with the silly old fool? Just a minute, Mr. Fred. You be careful what you're saying. That's my dad, remember? Mr. Jones! By the powers vested in me by King George, I command you to open this door. Permission to speak, Mr. Mannering? Yes, Corporal, what is it? It won't do you no good mentioning the king. He still thinks Queen Victoria's the king. <laughs> I see. Well, there's only one thing for it. We shall have to use cunning. Summerson? Yes, sir? When did it get dark? At night, sir. <laughs> you try to be funny. I mean, what time does it get dark? Tonight, for instance. Well, I'm not really sure, sir. A diary would give you the lighting up time, sir. Good idea, Walker. Who's got a diary? There you are, sir. That'll be one and ninepence. I don't want to buy one. <laughs> I just want to refer to it. Oh, please yourself. Well, I'd snap it up if I was you. I mean, it's not easy to buy a diary in May. <laughs> I get pretty scarce. Thank you, Walker. I'm not interested. Anyway, this is last year's. Is it? Well, there you are, then. They're even more scarce. <laughs> anyway, this will probably give us a rough idea. Let's see now. Ah, here we are. Week commencing May the 14th. 21.15 or 9.15? <laughs> really, Wilson. You'd think they'd know which, wouldn't you? 21.15, sir, is just another way of saying 9.15. Ah. <clears throat> yeah, well, of course, I know that. Yes, of course. Just trying to see if you were on your toes. Ah, yeah, of course, sir, yes. Right, men. Now, I'm going to dismiss you now. But I want you all to parade again in the church hall at 10 o'clock tonight. I don't think I'll be able to do that, Mr. Mannering. Why not? Well, my mum likes me to be in bed by quarter to ten. <laughs> well, a little lad of your age. Well, it's true, isn't it, Mr. Wilson? Yes, it's quite true. How do you know? Well, I, uh, I sometimes go round there, you know, for supper. And, <laughs> and uh, things. What thing? What, uh, what? Ah, yes, yes, I remember now. Hmm. Well, Pike, you'll just have to have a late night. My mum's not going to like it, Mr. Manry. Well, then she'll just have to lump it, won't she? <laughs> right, men. Parade back at the church hall, 10 o'clock tonight. Dismiss. All right. Hey, Sergeant Wilson. What is it, Walker? Do we really have to put all this black stuff all over our faces? I've just had a wash. I'm sorry, Walker, but Mr. Mannering wants to treat this trip to the museum as a full-scale night manoeuvre. I have one of those planned myself. I expect our old man will be back home by the time we finish this laugh. <laughs> my mum says that staying up late will give me bags under my eyes. <laughs> That'll be handy. We can use them to carry the weapons we pinch. <laughs> all right, man. Gather round. Hello. Now, as you know, the object of the exercise is to get those weapons out of the museum. This afternoon, we tried the direct approach and it got us nowhere. Tonight, we shall be clever and use the back door, as it were. Permission to speak, Mr. Manrin? Yes, what is it, Joan? I don't think the museum's got a back door. <laughs> I was talking figuratively, Corporal Joan. Oh, oh, were you really, sir? Oh, oh. We shall therefore proceed... Permission to, to speak, oh, sir? Yes. <laughs> yes, what is it now? I just want you to apologise for stopping you just now when you were in your full flood. Yes, all right. <laughs> I, 
I accept your apology. Yes, sir. Now, as I was saying, we will proceed to the museum and we will then conceal ourselves by the front door. Private Fraser, who will be disguised as an ARP warden, will then knock loudly on the door until Corporal Jones's father answers. Fraser will then tell him that he has a light showing. When he comes out to have a look, we will creep through the door and lock it behind us. Well, supposing he won't open the door, sir? Well, we just have to make him open it. Well, that's what we tried to do this afternoon. Permission to speak, sir? Yes, Jones. Show him half a bottle of whiskey. That'll do the trick. <laughs> yes, I'm sure it would. Where are we going to get half a bottle of whiskey? Yeah, hang on a tick while I'll get my case open. <laughs> there you are. 30, Bob. Walker. It's only 15 shillings in the shops. Yeah, but you can't get it in the shops, can you? <laughs> all right. Here you are. 30 shillings. Thank you, Mr Mannering. Right, Fraser. Hi. As you're going to be the one talking to the old boy, you might as well take charge of the whiskey now. <laughs> oh, Mr Manning, I'll do that. Here you are, then, Jock. Well, thank you, Joe. Mm -hmm. Well, don't look at it like that, Fraser. <laughs> Just thinking what a bonny wee bottle it is. Yes, well, don't drink it unless you have to. Just show it to him. Oh, you can trust me. I'll only drink it strictly in the line of duty. Right, men. Fall in outside. Yeah. Right, Wilson. Are the rest of the men in position? I think so, sir. What do you mean, you think so? Oh, sir, what with the darkness and all the men having black faces, it's not awfully easy. <laughs> I can only see them when they smile. <laughs> and, in fact, I had to tell them a joke in order to count them, sir. <laughs> Were they all there? Well, I'm still not sure, sir. You see, they, they didn't find the joke very funny. Oh, <laughs> so. Right. Fraser. I got my run. This whole plan depends on you. Give Sergeant Wilson and me time to join the others, and then knock on the door until the old fool has got a light showing. Right, sir. Good luck. Follow me, Wilson. Coming, sir. Well, here goes. Who's there? What you want? I'm an ARP warden. You got light showing? Oh, no, I ain't. Well, come out and see for yourself. I ain't opening this door in my nightshirt. I didn't know you had a door in your nightshirt. Oh, <laughs> any man, you ought to be on it, Ma. Go on, buzz off. Hey, just a minute. What's that you got there? What? Oh, this wee bottle, you mean? Aye. That's right, is it whiskey? Aye. Uh, hey? Uh, it helps to keep the cold out. Do you want some? Ah, oh, I'll, I'll have a drop. Well, I'm not passing it through that shutter thing. I might never see it again. You'll have to open the door. Well, hold on a minute. Uh, where's the whiskey? Here you are. Uh, ta. Uh, 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 uh. Ah, that's good. Uh, now... Where's this flaming light? Uh, it's a bit further along from here and on the first floor. You'll, uh, you'll have to come over here to see it. Come oh, on. All right. Uh, whereabouts do you mean? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, I thought you'd be able to see it from here, but no, no, you can't. Eh? You'll have to go a wee bit further. Oh, flaming nuisance. I could catch pneumonia right here. Right, men. Here we go and be very quiet. Wilson, yes. you be the last in and close the door behind you. Very well, sir. There's no light showing. Oh, well, well, well. I I'm sorry. I I'm sure I saw one. Oh, you be drinking too much whiskey. I'm, I'm going to... going back in. Here, 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 this door. Door's closed itself. Now what am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I told you'd catch me deaf out here. Flame and digits. That's where you are. And I'll have to try and get in at the lever through window, right round at the back. Oh, quite a long way, is it? Yes, it is. And me only in my carpet slippers. It's all your fault. Come on, give me a hand. Oh, my pleasure. What about another wee nap to help you keep out the cold, eh? Yes, sir. It's spooky in here, isn't it, Uncle Arthur? I've told you before, don't call me that when we're on parade. I'm Sergeant Wilson. No, the last time you told me not to call you it was when we were in the bank. Well, don't call me Uncle Arthur at the bank or on parade. Now, is that quite clear? Yes, of course, Sergeant Wilson. Can I hold your hand? <laughs> no, you can't. Now, come on. 
Let's catch up with the others. Here, Mr. Mannering. Do you think we ought to take some of these halibuts? No, I don't think so, Walker. Anyway, the halibuts. I don't suppose you'll mind. <laughs> ah, there you are, Wilson. No. Close the door, all right behind you. Oh, yes, yes. I found this on the wall back there, Mr. Mannering. Is it any good? Pike, that's a crossbow. <laughs> Part was suitable for modern warfare. Here, look at this, sir. He says here that this is a special elephant shooting musket by Pot and Pot of Bond Street, 1835. <laughs> now, let's get it out. I mean, if it goes through an elephant, Mr. Mannering, it will probably go through a tank. <laughs> it goes through glass as well. <laughs> Put it down, Walker, before you break anything else. This way, men. We'll try this section. Hey, you go, Mr. Mannering. There's somebody standing over there watching us. Where? Stupid boy, it's a suit of armour. <laughs> Sorry? Here, what's this? That's a breastplate, Jonesy. Protects the top. How do you protect the bottom? Don't turn your back on the enemy. <laughs> Mannering? Yes, Wilson, what is it? There's a cupboard here marked 303 carbines. British infantry weapons during South African war. That sounds all right. How many are there? I'll well, have a look, sir. I'll just, <clears throat> I'll just get this door open. Well? The cupboard seems to be empty. Just a minute, sir. Uh, can I uh, can I borrow your torch? Yes, here you are. There's another notice here. Requisitioned by Ensor, 5th of March, 1940. Ensor? What do they need rifles for? Oh, protection, sir. Never regarded them as a frontline unit. Well, they get some very difficult audiences sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's it then. We're not going to get any weapons here. Better go back to base. Just a moment, sir. We're missing Walker and Jones. Oh, we can't hang about for stragglers. Come on, men. Follow me. Come on. Here, Jonesy, here, come here. Look at this huge thing. Chinese rocket gun, 1901. Used against the boxers. I pay no heed to animals, Easter Sueys. <laughs> yeah, this will brighten the maneuvers up a bit. What? Look at the thing, it fires. They've got a sort of grenade on the end. Yellow fiends. Oh, it'll make a right mess of you, couldn't it? It's lovely. Quick, give us an hand, Jonesy. Well, it looks a bit heavy, Joe. Well, we won't get it moved by just staring at it. Come on, push! Fraser won't be able to keep your dad at bay much longer. Right, come on then. Move it. Oh. Left hand down a bit. Move. Oh. Right. Now you've got your feet through the window. Careful. Now, turn round and face me. Uh, uh. Then you can lower yourself down inside. Watch it. That's right. Hold on, hold on. Now well, help well, me. Well, That's it. Don't push too hard. I've got to find something to stand on. No, no. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to put my foot on something. Ow! Oh, pull me back. Pull me back. What's the matter? I got my foot stuck right down the watch it. Oh. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, grab hold of this chain. <laughs> oh, that was very clever, wasn't it? Oh, well, it, it flushed you out, didn't it? <laughs> Oh, well, oh, Jonesy, now we've got it back to the church hall, what do you reckon? I reckon I strained something. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit heavy, wasn't it? Hey, Joe, didn't get much, did we? What are you talking about, Pikey? Jones and I go to all the trouble to bring this Chinese rocket gun back here, and you have the nerve to say we didn't get much. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. Yeah, and take your tea mug off there. Why? That's where you put a powder in for firing the rockets. Oh. I reckon... The back end of the rocket must have stuck out here. Hey, look, look here, look at this. A fuse powder's in this horn thing. Yeah! Hey, are these the, the spare rockets on the tray underneath? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Look, look, look. You lit it here. Yeah. I say, Pike, listen, if you got busy with your penknife, yeah. you could unbung those ports and we could have it working in no time. Right. Be a nice surprise for Mr. Mannering. Mm -hmm. That's right, Frank. Go on, have a go. Get unbunging. All right, Mr. Jones. Yeah, look out, look out. Here he comes. Ah, Walker, Jones. Don't think your zeal and initiative are not appreciated. You've both displayed just the sort of spirit that's going to get Jerry on the run. But I feel this rocket gun is a little too antique, even for us. So, so we'll return it in the morning. Wilson, come over here a minute. Aye, right, sir. Not much of a haul, was it, sir? Oh, it mustn't be downhearted, Wilson. Aye, right, sir. In the hands of a courageous man, Pike's crossbow might account for an enemy scout. I suppose so, sir. And Godfrey's ball and chain could play havoc with the spokes of an enemy bison. <laughs> I'd better talk to the men. I don't want them to lose heart over this little setback. Right, Ben, now pay attention, everybody. Yes, sir. Walker, Jones. Sir. Leave that rocket gun alone. Come over here, please. Right, 
Jeff? Up. Now then. There's no doubt at all that GHQ will rush weapons to us just as soon as they can get their hands on them. In the meantime, we must press our ingenuity into service. What have you in mind, Captain Monroe? At the top of every hill, we're going to station drums of old sump oil. <laughs> at the first sign of emergency, we're going to spread it all over the road. You can imagine the result. If the enemy transport can't get a grip on the road surface, his whole war effort will grind to a halt. Permission to speak, sir? Yes, Jones. Why don't we all have packets of tin tacks to put on the road as well? Excellent, Jones. Punctured vehicles won't travel far, will they? As one more thing. We're not leaving here... Excuse me, I... Mr Manreen. I've done it. Thank you, Pike. When... What have you done? I've cleared the ports in the rocket gun. Oh, good, good. Well done. Yeah, the fuse powder's fizzing away beautifully. Splendid. <laughs> now, as I was about to say, we're not leaving here... At... What did you say? I said the fuse powder's fizzing away very nicely now. Look. Look out, sir. I think it's going to go up. Everyone down on the floor. Oh, oh, oh. Get out. Oh, get out. Oh. This, it's like Guy Fawkes night, isn't it, Uncle Arthur? Yes, it's awfully pretty. I don't think the vicar's going to be very pleased about that mark on his ceiling. Where's that, Jones? Down there by your foot. <laughs> Fancy those rockets going off after all those years. Yes, damn clever, those Chinese. Thank goodness they're on our side. In that episode of Dad's Army, from the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessurier, Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Lorry, Private Fraser, James Beck, Private Walker, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, and Eric Woodburn as George Jones. Museum piece was adapted for radio by Harold Snowd and Michael Knowles and produced by John Dias. Thank you.